Uh, Senator Johnson, recognized thank, for your question. Mr. Chairman, uh, appreciate you holding this hearing. What I know of uh, your bill, Senator Paul, I'm sure I'm going to co-sponsor it once I review it. Uh, but I want to take this in a slightly different direction because I've never had Dr. Redfield before me. Um, the cover-up of the funding of dangerous research is not the only area that our federal agencies have been covering up, been lying to. It's not been transparent. Uh, I've sent over 60 oversight letters to the agency. It's been largely ignored. I'll flash this one more time. These are the uh, last 50 pages of the Fauci emails that I've been trying to get unredacted for the last couple of years. Um, one of my oversight letters, that's what I really want to focus on, is the standard operating procedures, Dr. Redfield, that your agency issued nine days after you left. So I'm, I'm assuming you uh, had some input in that or knowledge of it. So they issued a standard operating procedure in terms of the analysis of the VAERS system. Um, are you aware of that, that they're going to be doing proportional reporting ratios and empirical Bayesian analysis on VAERS? Senator, I'm really not up to speed on that. Uh, um... Okay, so, so, look, so is there any reason why the CDC, if they're doing those analyses, proportional reporting ratios and empirical Bayesian analysis, why they wouldn't release that to a member of Congress, a senator, requesting to see that data and quite honestly release it to the public? Is there any, any reason no, for them I, to withhold I, that information? I, I, I totally agree with uh, you, what you are pointing out. You know, I'm disturbed that there's not much more an aggressive release to the public of the data they have about safety of these vaccines. I think it's not appropriate. So they are withholding it. Yeah. Um, I think I understand why. You know, let me put up my chart. Uh, it, it is true, by the way, they were touting VAERS. You know, Mr. Tom Shimabukuro, in October of 2020, about a month and a half beforehand, uh, was, was talking about what a great system this was going to be. Do you agree with that? I mean, I could, I could give you the quote. So I, I don't want to take, yeah. trust me. You were touting the VAERS system. Um, but once the numbers started coming in, you know, I think by April, we had over 2,000 deaths reported worldwide in the VAERS system. About 40-some percent of those were occurring on days zero, one, or two. So that was concerning. I, I realize the limitations of VAERS, but here, here's the current VAERS report compared to other drugs, by the way. The top of the one is ivermectin. This is the one the FDA says horse paste. Come on, y'all, you're not a cow, you're not a horse. On average, over 27 years, 16 deaths per year. Hydroxychloroquine, 80 deaths per year, over 36 years. Uh, the flu vaccine, in, in four, 54 years of reporting, no, 33 years of reporting, a total of 2,500 deaths, about 75 a year. Let me skip ahead, because we have Tylenol, we have uh, other things as well. The COVID vaccines, over 37,000 deaths. Today, by the way, 24% of those deaths reported are occurring on the day of vaccination or within two days. That's about 11,000 a year. So, Dr. Redfield, I, I appreciate the fact that you've actually admitted that vaccine injuries are real. They're a lot more significant. I mean, total number of adverse events reported, 1.6 million. And, of course, one of the problems with VAERS is it dramatically understates the number of vaccine injuries. So a couple of questions I have for you, because you would agree that we were generally led to believe that the vaccine would stay in our arm, correct? Yeah, I think, again, the, the, the people oversold the vaccine and didn't give uh, transparent uh, uh, comments so, about the potential side effects. So again, we, we were told it was going to stay in our arm, right? Yeah. To, okay. Well, we were told this is mRNA going to degrade rapidly in our body, right? But it wasn't mRNA, was it? It was modified. RNA. Mm -hmm. It was actually produced synthetically so it wouldn't degrade. And we now have studies that say the mRNA is circulating in the body at least, I think, two months, and we haven't done studies beyond that, correct? I know in your own practice, you don't administer that because you realize the spike protein is toxic to the body. I prefer the killed protein vaccines. When, when did you first determine, or when did you first find out about the biodistribution studies Pfizer had done that the Japanese regulators released in February of 2021? Probably on the, on the lipid nanoparticles. Yeah, prob probably somewhere in the in the spring or summer of 21, it was clear that the mRNA in some patients was persisting much longer than but it when, should. When did you find out about the dis the biodistribution of the lipid nanoparticles, or when did people in the FDA when should have they known about the fact that they were biodistributing all over the body? 
Yeah, I don't know the answer to that. I was telling you the summer of 2021 is when I probably became more aware that this... Because, uh, only because the Japanese regulators released that. But again, this is part of the Pfizer studies. So they knew that the lipid nanoparticle, which is designed to permeate, difficult to permeate barriers, correct? Right. That's the design of the lipid nanoparticle. So they knew it was going to biodistribute all over the body, uh, concentrating the ovaries, the adrenal glands. It crosses the blood-brain barrier, correct? Correct. So what would, ha let's, let's just, again, you're a doctor. What happens when you have a lipid nanoparticle biodistributing, and let's say this mRNA, this modified mRNA, attaches to a heart muscle? What, what is it? It, it? it injects itself into the cells, causes that heart muscle cell to produce a spike protein, correct? Which is toxic to the body. And then what does the body do? It has a very strong pro-inflammatory response, which is problematic. Again, I think, Senator, what you're getting at, which I'm 100% agreeing with you, is I think there was not appropriate transparency from the beginning about the potential side effects of these vaccines. And I do think there was inappropriate uh, decisions by some to try to under-report uh, any side effects because they argued that would make the public less likely to get vaccinated. I do think one of the greatest mistakes that was made, of course, was mandating the, these vaccines. They should have never been mandated. It should have been open to personal choice. They don't prevent infection. They do have side effects. I'm going to clinic this afternoon. But again, I, again, I appreciate your admitting side effects, but you have to admit the people, the agencies, the, the, the marks. You know, the Dr. Marks, yeah. the Dr. Woodcock, they're still, by and large, denying this, right? They're saying, well, they're mild, they're rare, and they're mild. The FDA they're should, not rare, and they're severe uh, yeah. to death. The FDA should release all of the safety data they have. I was very disappointed to hear that they were planning to hold on to that till 2026. That really creates a, a sense of total lack of trust in our public health agencies towards vaccination. It's counterproductive. So, Mr. Chairman, I, I'm not getting cooperation out of the chairman of the Perm Subcommittee investigation to issue subpoenas to get this, these information, this information. Uh, you have not yet issued a subpoena to get the final 50 pages unredacted. I would suggest we do that. Again, as important as the cover-up of the origin story is, there's a lot more that's being covered up. The public has a right to know. We pay for these agencies, we pay their salaries, we fund these studies, and they're not giving them to us. So again, I, I would ask you, again, appreciate this hearing, this is important, there are many aspects of our miserably failed response to COVID that needs to be uncovered. Not the least of which, the sabotage of early treatment, which I didn't have time to get into. Thank you.